Rich, tonight is going to be super fun. Let's start off with this question. So you're in full control of the settings for a dynasty startup. What's your format of choice? So number of teams, tight end premium, et cetera. Go ahead, man. Yeah, man. I feel like I'm always in control of dynasty startups, which is like <laughs> terrible. Cause like I, I'm the commissioner of like 20 leagues and it's like the lat and I'm the worst like technology guy too. Like in an MFL, it's like, you might as well have dropped oh. like a, a can of alphabet soup on there at me and tell me what it says. Cause I don't know. But I mean, for me, this is easy. This is easy. I mean, uh, super flex tight end premium. I mean, it's really 12 teams, super flex tight end premium as high as 14. I would go. Um, in a couple leagues, I'm about to do another startup, which I said I wouldn't do for two years, but I'm going to do one. Um, it's going to be a 14 teamer here in August, but yeah, I think, I think it's just, it's really the way everybody should play. And now obviously you can say what you can't tell the people what to do, but anytime you have a league where everybody's getting the best of it, right? Like the quarterbacks are the number one scorers. Uh, the tight ends are really emphasized there on a position that's really completely like, like the little redheaded stepchild that nobody really wants anything to right. do with, unless you get like the, the one that's got the, you know, the professional football player and the rest are like work at like, you know, they, they clean. We call them trash cans. We tongue, call them trash you know I mean? cans. On yeah. Show. Yeah. Um, I, I gotta be careful. I don't want to devalue anybody's job. That's kind of shitty to do, but um, yeah, I mean, I love that. And like and then on top of that, like it just, anytime you have a format like that it increases trades, uh, it makes the rookie draft so much more deeper. It makes the rookie draft so much more exciting because then you're getting to the second round with value is. And that's why you play this game to have fun. So like you're looking for opportunities to make this game more fun, um, but without also like making it too complicated, right? Like, so I think that format really brings all that together and creates the best league that I played in uh, for playing dynasty for 20 years. It's probably the best format I've ever played. And I've tried a lot, you know, I've tried auction leagues just, re- you know, John Bosch is like, Rich, you got to play auction. It's the only way to play <laughs> dynasty. And I'm like, all right, John, I'll get in a league with you. And I'm like, man, this just is not for me. You know, like yeah. even in best ball, like I'm in a couple best ball leagues and I don't like, they're okay, but I don't like, I don't enjoy them as much because I don't set my lineup, you know, like, if I'm doing best ball, I just want to be an underdog and like get on there and play basketball. But for sure. dynasty, it's kind of like, it just takes away some of that uh, fun. And that's why I play the game. Like, I mean, yeah, I want to, I want to, um, I want to win, you know, and, 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 the, and the money you get from winning is fantastic. And the titles are right. even, even better, but like, it's the process that got you there. You know, like even like win a, a, a league in year one, like it's not as satisfying as winning a year league in year five. Like it's, it's like literally two completely different feelings. That's, like that's a good call. Yeah. 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 I just did a startup with uh your co-host Scott Connor, Ohio dynasty league uh, with a lot of people in the industry. Um, and I won that league and it's like, it's cool. Definitely with the, like the, like the people that are in there with like Jeff Bell and Chris Allen and rich rebar and you know, t- nice. like, like, all these people, like it's nice to like beat those guys, you know, but at the same sure, time sure. it's like, ah, it's kind of like almost like a redraft win. You know, um, which is I, those aren't as fun for me. So, yeah. Let me ask you this. So, um, so you said twelve or fourteen team super flex tight end premium. What premium? So PPR, and then what is it for tight ends? Uh, either one and a half or two points for tight end. Everybody always wants to do one and a half. I always want to do two points. Like yeah, Robert yeah. Said. I always. I do, like one point seven five. I like one point seven five because one point five. It's 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 a fake premium. It's not enough. Yeah, it's no. not even that much. One point five. Like, dude, like, who's like, hey, dude, I'll give you 50 cents. Like, bro, no, give me 75 cents. And then we got yourself a deal. Yeah. I, I mean, there pants is, off, buddy. <laughs> like, if, if you're not a good dynasty player with a 1.5 and it, <laughs> you make it clear if there's some newbies that it's a 1.5 tight end premium. So you let them overdraft tight ends because in a 1.5, it's such a negligible difference and probably overvalued. Okay. So, all right. We got that tight end premium. How many starters? Um, that really just like, I usually let the, um, league kind of decide that, you know what I mean? Like, Hey, what do you guys want to go with? Like, I'll go anywhere from, um, is like the one, you obviously have the super flex spot and I usually go one more flex spot on top of that. But like, so for the Kings classic league that we just started, um, the first dynasty Kings classically, we, that's how we had it. And everybody's like, dude, we can't have 30 man rosters. And not have another flex spot at another sure, one. I'm like, sure. okay. And that's, how, and that's honestly like how I run all my dynasty leagues in the first place. Like, I'm such a faux commish because, like, I don't run it that way. It's not like Rich's way or the highway. I have one rule in every league I'm in, and that's the only one I'm like, I, I, I'm get all Hitler about. 
But besides that, it's like it's just a democracy. It's like, hey, dude, if you have an idea for the league, we'll put it to a vote. If seven people say yes, then that's the new rule in the league. Like sure, it's as simple sure. as that. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah, because we always say we call start nine. We we use number of starters a ton in in our conversations. It, it's a it's a huge part of you know when we're analyzing trades. So start nines of the world, we consider those to be really shallow and you want hammers at every spot, right? So the Hollywood Browns of the world or whatever, he's maybe not even the best example, but you know, some of those receivers that would be valuable in deeper formats essentially don't warrant a starting spot in a start nine. We like to play 12 team start 11. So you're oh, talking, wow. yeah, yeah. Deeper formats, PPR 1.75 tight end premium, we get a little squirrely sometimes with like a 0.15 point per carry, a little bit of first down. We play in a lot of leagues, so we've got yeah. all sorts of different formats. But we we try for this show to talk about start 10 because we find that a lot of newbies, they play in start eight, super shallow, where it's like they have a trade question and it's five pieces on one side and then they'd be getting Justin Jefferson. It's like, yeah, get Justin Jefferson. You're only starting eight players every week. Get the hammers, as we say. Yeah. So that's kind of how we like to do it. Ten's not too bad. I mean, it's li like literally that's what we just is, did for that Kings yeah. Classic. We just added one just, more flex spot. Right. Like, right. I like nine. Like, I'm at that nine. Like, I like the nine spot in super flex leagues. But like, I can go with ten too. Like, the more, the more, the merrier. Like, the more people I get in there, it makes again it makes drafting a little bit more fun. You're a little bit more conscientious about like how. It's funny too because how you do it. It's like a, it's a completely different way of how you would manage that one flex spot. Could like totally change the dynamic For of sure. your team. Like you mentioned, like yeah, go go hammer it down on Justin Jefferson compared to like okay, like now guys like Nico Collins and Donovan Peoples yeah. Jones like hold way more value. You know, definitely in dynasty because you, if you're starting 10, 11 people, like you could hit some weird like bye weeks and you're just like oh for oh sure dpj oh <laughs> dpj and the start 11 i mean he's like quasi relevant that's that's what's cool about deeper formats is you know the tyler boyds of the world are, are actually you know relevant Relevant, so, yeah what other question was i going to ask you that i just had on the tip of my tongue so how many leagues are you in rich uh i think i'm in like right around like dynasty leagues like they're just dynasty leagues like right around 20 okay uh, yeah i believe is the number which is a lot, but that's why I built the Dynasty GM to really kind of help me um, oversee all that and kind of manage that. It just makes it makes it so much simpler by having all my leagues in one spot. Definitely when they're on different platforms, to have them all in like one app. Um, it's a sick tool. That's what I wanted. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a sick that. tool. Yeah, yeah, because I was listening to you for a while and then... Like I knew you guys were a big deal or whatever. Then you drop the GM tool. I'm like, whoa, they've been building this thing out for a long time in the back end. But uh, yeah, it took about a year then. to get that going. But we had the idea. Only a like, year, huh? Yeah, the, the build it. Yeah. And then we had, but we had an idea like probably like three, four years ago. And then like just finding like the right developer and right all that and throwing them like throwing money down the drain on some developers oh, oh, for just sure kind of for like sure getting it through but like yeah. we're in a good spot now and it's just kind of now pedal the metal but yeah man it's a, and we preach that all the time it's like listen man when you subscribe to the nerds like you're not just like you're not putting money in my pocket like you're putting money in the dynasty fantasy football like that's what we're doing like we just want to grow the game like i have the same agenda that i had day one when i started dynasty nerds from the very first moment the site started in the podcast it's like dude i just want people to learn about dynasty and play the game and you know, anything I could do to help build and make it easier for you or, you know, information wise or the tools I could provide to any user to make that so much easier for them to enjoy the game at a broader scale to join more leagues and not join more leagues just to be like, oh, all my leagues are the same. But like you said, like try all these different formats to see what works for you, you know, like yeah. and that could lead to Debbie and like all these different things. And there's so many different people in this community with so many different ways they play and so many different avenues to kind of think about the process. Like it's like, Yes, like go out there and just sponge it all up. You know what I mean? And like, and we'll always be here in the corner with every little thing you need to help you along the way to kind of play the game. So that's why that's why we build it. And that's like, I mean, our roadmap for that tool is like insane because we have so many things. Like we wish we had or like oh, Apple, I could only imagine just build everything, yeah, like right, to put them in right. there all at once. But unfortunately, it just takes time and money. But we're gonna we're gonna keep on cruising. Yeah, you have to triage what features you want to add. I, I hear you. I'm in the same boat. Let's put this up, man. So obviously people just 
drafted Bryce Young quite early in the 23 first uh, round. Bryce Young or an early 24 first? So, Rich, let's say it's it's not going to be the 101, okay? Doesn't matter. So we're not looking at Caleb. Let's say top three, top four. Top, easily 24 first. Easily. So is it just because you're uh, bearish on Bryce Young or what? Well, yeah. I mean, that is one reason. Um, it, another reason is next year's class is going to be much stronger at quarterback. You're going to have, obviously, Caleb Williams at the 1-1. One, so that's fine. You don't have the 1-1, but even at 1-2, I mean – you know, every quarterback steps up. Like you're going to have quarterbacks that step up every single year, but we already have a, another quarterback. We already expect to be the one, two in most super flex leagues and Drake may, Perfect. but you know, there's Quinn Ewers. Like there's, there's a couple guys there. And then even if you miss, like, even if you don't want like how Bijan was the one, one this year, right. Over all these quarterbacks. So yep. one, if you have a quarterback, um, and a running back's going over that quarterback in a super flex draft, like you know, this quarterback class isn't the best quarterback class ever. And I don't care how special Bijan, because if Caleb Williams was in his class, it doesn't matter if Caleb, uh, if Bijan Robinson had golden shoes and he was guaranteed never get hurt, you're still taking Caleb Williams there. So on top of that, you have Quinn Ewers, you have a couple other quarterbacks coming in that class. You have literally the Bijan Robinson of wide receivers in that class and oh. Marvin Harrison Jr. as well. So it's like, is he going to be top? Is he going to be top four wide or dynasty wide receiver right off the bat, or maybe even ahead of CD lamb? It's he's going to be stupid high, right? <sighs> so you got Jefferson or chase, whatever flavor you like yeah. and CD AJ Brown. I mean, I would take him over right AJ there, Brown, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's just, I'm really interested to see what Garrett Wilson does this year. Um, with the Jets and how he steps takes a step forward, but I would have him probably right around four, right out the gates. Um, I think he's that special. I really do. And I, you know, I, I want to see what CD does. If CD takes a big step there, it would be a little higher, but I mean, he'll be the best. I'll tell you this. He'll be the best value you get at wide receiver. Cause everybody else is going to take those guys, Jefferson chase and CD lamb and Harrison to be the, with the youth and his talent, he'll easily be the best value. Um, one of those things where like, if you took him one, like, let me put it this way. If you were in a startup, not in super flex one QB and you did the startup draft and say, say Marvin Harrison goes number two overall, three and overall in the, in the NFL draft. And you took Marvin Harrison one, one, I wouldn't sit there and go, wow, you're an idiot. Justin Jefferson, Jamar chase. I wouldn't say that. You know what I mean? Cause like, I believe in him that much. Like to me, he's a foolproof prospect. So like for me to think that, like, why would I be mad if you took him over Justin Jefferson? Like, I, like what, what can't Marvin Harrison do? Like in that long term format that a guy like Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase can't do, um, that CD Lamb can't do. Because I mean, literally, Marvin Harrison can do everything. Like he really can. He could do everything. And in Dynasty, we're always chasing that youth. We're always chasing always. it. So, especially a reason- wide receiver. I mean, it's gold. Yeah. It's, it's dynasty gold. That's a 10 year. That's a 10 year window. You just bought, you know, Ju- Justin Jefferson's probably a seven year window. Jamar chase seven year window, probably around there. And yeah, you're talking three years, but three years is a lifetime in dynasty fantasy football. So like right. they get that decade window. Like, first of all, you're like, dude, I hope my, my league lasts 10 years, right? Like For you sure. really do. Like, it, like some of us that are in like in the biz or in, in the, in the industry or like, we're kind of blessed. Like we're, we don't have leagues fold. You know what I mean? Like I have somebody leave with my leagues. I put a tweet out and that, that Phil, it doesn't matter done. how much the league is. It's literally filled in 30 seconds. 30 you know what I mean? So like we're lucky in that aspect, but like to have a player of that magnitude is literally, I consider dynasty gold. You know, there's a reason B. John Robinson's my dynasty running back one. He's never taken a snap in the NFL. There's a reason B. Priest Hall is my running back two in dynasty. And he's coming off an ACL injury. You know yep. what I mean? Like yep. you, we chase that so much. So I, the answer to the question to me, easily those picks over Bryce Young. I'm very bullish on Bryce Young. I I know I have him as my third rookie quarterback in this draft class, and that's not even like that's not me saying Bryce Young's a bad quarterback. Like I just don't know how good of a fantasy quarterback he's gonna be. You know, what I mean, slim, a little shorter on the shorter side. Like all those guys, you're, you're gonna hope that, that would turn into Drew Brees. That's what you're gonna hope. And exactly. you know, you're talking outliers. And anytime you're chasing outliers, you're gonna miss tremendously significantly more than you're ever gonna hit. And because that's what Drew Brees, he's an outlier. And we thought we hit pay dirt for Kyler Murray, you know. But look at Kyler and like Kyler Murray's real value is on the run. But look at Kyler Murray's stock here two years later, it's absolutely plummeted. You know, like 
you can't trade Kyler Murray in Dynasty right now, Superflex, if you tried. Like, it's like, unless you're getting back, like, if you're training a Ferrari and you're getting a 1979 Caprice back, like, that's what you're getting for Kyler Murray right now. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that because you don't even know it's going to run. And it looks like a yacht. You know, it's made of te- it's made of steel. Like, you don't <laughs> want that. You're like, you want flexibility. So, yeah, man, it, it, it's I'm worried about, like, I want fantasy points, right? Like, that's what I'm looking for. And I don't know what, like, if Bryce Young has what it takes to be that elite guy, right? In fantasy world, that top seven. It's a reason Anthony Richardson's going ahead of him because in Superflex, because of what he offers on the ground. And that's really important. It really is. It's so important. Yeah. It's what made Daniel Jones, like, take a huge step in the fantasy value this year is that Russian ability sure. averaging, you know, is a seven hundred Russian. You can't discount stuff like that. It's why those pass catcher running backs are so valuable. And Bryce Young does not look, because I feel like, okay, if you're going to move Bryce Young or gets the wrong hit, like he's just going to get broken. I mean, literally when you see him he on his- He can't like, take very many big hits. I mean, it's just not possible, right? No. I mean, I'm bigger I'm bigger than him and I would be freaking dead if I got hit by anybody. You're bigger than him and you're just on a screen right now and you're bigger than him almost. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah right. give me a break here. So that's yeah. why all the reasons I would take those guys over Bryce Young. It's a very simple process for me when it comes to that. Just like, I hope he does well. It's nothing, it's nothing against Bryce Young, but like from what I've seen those that from that stature, like again, I'm looking for an outlier and I just don't think it's going to be like, if you hate, uh, if you hate Jared Goff, um, who's way bigger than him and probably going to a better fancy quarterback. Um, you know, if you hate those kind of guys, like if you hate Kenny Pickett, like, what do you all love with Bryce Young about? I mean, I know he's got a better. I, I know it's. I know you're like, oh, Rich, you're an idiot for comparing Bryce Young to Kenny Pickett, but like, like those kind of quarterbacks where they don't have that huge upside of the rushing ability and you know tons of passing yards. He's got no weapons. He's got no size. It's and again, it's, you're playing a long game at quarterback, but I just don't see him ever being higher. I don't. I don't ever see him being a quarterback one ever. Is it yeah, like fair. his entire career? Yeah, I happen to be bullish on him, but I'll, I'll be honest. It's you know, and, and this will this will go into the next question here. But I sometimes get a little bit too much into the gut feeling thing. Like I've uh, got a gut feeling that C.J. Stroud is going to bust, and a yeah. gut feeling that Bryce Young is going to hit. I don't know. I just like him. He's a gamer. Obviously, C.J. Stroud's a gamer too. But on on certain teams, I want Bryce Young. I don't want him to be my QB two. If he's uh, my QB three, I'm I'm feeling good. But here, let's let's put this up here because I was pumped about this show because we are very different, I guess, in terms of how we look at Dynasty or at least we look at other things more. So you guys are big into film. Talk to us about how you use film and how someone who isn't a film guy or girl can get started. We never talk about film, Rich. Yeah, and I hate that. Um, <laughs> so I hate like... Okay, I don't hate analytics. That's not what I mean by that by any means. Like, I love numbers too. Like, I love reading stats, whatever. But like, I want to see it with my own eyes. I don't want to read numbers. Numbers can be skewed. You can really make numbers look good or bad. You can make a green line up and to the right if you want. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, you can really (laughs) skew numbers to make them look as good as you want them to look. And you can use these stats and like, and numbers are so subjective. Like, like way more to compared to like who they're going with and as a whole, like. I want to see that player on film. I want to see him play in football. I want to see the way he runs. I want to see the way he cuts. I want to see the way he uses his hands. I want to see the way he runs his routes. I want to see his patience. I want to see his vision. I want to see how he acts with the ball when the ball is not going his way. Yeah. I want is, to see when is the, he still in the play. Yeah. Yes, yeah. man. Yep, that is yep. important to me. Like, like all that little stuff is important to me. So like, I want to see it. Cause like, when I see it, like I just see it and I believe it. And I've had like, and honestly, like for me, like I've had tremendous success, like doing it. Like, it's like, cause I didn't play football growing up. Like, I'm not like, you're not going to sit here and talk like X's and O's. Like I'm some football genius, but like, I know the game and I know, I know a good football player and, and what they're supposed to do and they're not to when they're on the field. So like when I'm reading numbers, those are all fine and dandy, but like I could scour numbers and make those work for me, but I can't, change what my eyes see and i i found that to be the easiest way for me personally and everybody's got to find their own path to find that success and whatever you do obviously when you find success that's going to seem to you like it's the right way to do it because you found success like it worked so for me looking at numbers just tells me literally half the story 
where when I'm looking at film and I'm watching a lot of film, that tells me everything I need to know. Like, because the numbers will be there, right? Like those numbers will be there. And when you want to compare, like when people are in like the breakout age and all that, like, like breakout age to me, honestly, it means nothing to me. Like it literally means nothing to me. Like, I don't care about that. Like I want to see players get better every single year. I want to see, you know, them look, I want to see something click. Um, Cause you don't know, like, you don't know how good that offensive line was. You don't know how good the quarterback was. You might, you don't know how many balls that were like, close but not close you know you don't know like how he is versus jump balls like all that you get with your eyes and like you can read statistics about that as well but like it doesn't give you the whole story like it's not all encompassing it's like it's like reading a book compared to like watching a movie right like the books would be very detailed and you know you feel like oh i love the book way more because it's so detailed and so much more intimate but the the movie is going to be so much more beautiful and so much more visual, and you you get yeah. to sit back and relax and take the whole thing in you without retain, like you can retain it all. Money. Yeah, so like yeah, and, and it's fun. Like it's fun watching good football players too. Like you know when I watch Brees <laughs> yeah, Hall's yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> when I watch Brees Hall's film, like he was one of those players I watched every game he played because like he was that good. And I sat on my podcast and I was like, dude, I'm not gonna lie, like Brees Hall is one of the best running backs I've ever scouted. Like on tape, like. I feel like he's literally playing Tecmo football out there and he knows like he's played a game a million times. He knows where every defender is going to be like, he's that good. And I knew immediately in my eyes that Brees Hall was skyrocketing into the top of my dynasty rankings. You know, like when I watched, when I watched Zeke Elliott play football at Ohio state and he came out on my podcast, I was like, Zeke Elliott is dynasty running back one. He's going to say he goes in the NFL. And I got so much like, like slack about that. Like, dude, what are you talking about? He can't be NFL running back one uh, without taking a snap. And here we are like now eight years later and B. John Robinson's running back one by everybody. It's like, because the tape told me that, right? Like everything he does is going to translate to the NFL. Um, So that's, that's why I enjoy it. So you guys obviously have your film room and I, I have the, I have the GM tool. Um, um, admittedly, again, I'm not a film guy. I, I have access to your film room. I should probably just click on the damn link, but if yeah. some <laughs> rich is shaking Bathroom his head, breaks, he's like, bro. what are you doing, bro? Uh, That's okay, the best so, way to start. When you said how to start, like if you just join, like yeah. we literally, so they used to have a website called, um, oh my God, I can't remember the name of the, the website. Well, anyways, there's a website that you can watch film the cutups of the players where it just showed the, the when them when they're on the field. I'm like, I love this website. Yeah. And then the website went away, and I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> I need to build yep. a build my own thing. Yeah. I was I was looking for one, and I couldn't find one. And I was like, all right, I'll just light bulb. I mean, I'm not gonna. It. Yeah. I'm not gonna build it myself. I'm gonna pay somebody to build one oh, yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, you know, for, for sure, the website. For sure. And yeah, yeah. that's it. I mean, dynasty. Like again, when I say we're gonna build tools, like the fundamental tools, like we're building like the foundation first up, like, what do you need? Like you need a trade calculator. I always thought you need a league analyzer. See, I always thought everybody needed a bird's eye view of their dynasty leagues and like a film room, like to be able to watch these rookies and study these rookies and watch like what we watch, like and to be able to watch a player and not make it like, you know, like it's like, just like dreading it. Like, it's like, Oh, I could watch B. John Robinson's entire game in five minutes. Great. You know, like, oh, I could watch this player's game, entire game in four minutes, three minutes. Like, this is fantastic. Like, that's where you start because now you're watching many games because you see other people too. Like, oh, I watched two games. Like, dude, you can't watch two games of a player and then like, no. this is what he does well and he doesn't do well. It's like, it's like watching something come up and hit a home run in their first at bat. and like, yep, that's it. That's it. That's Babe Ruth. Without yeah, a doubt. Guys just hits homers. <laughs> Yeah, with our goldfish uh, attention span, yeah, you got to jam everything you possibly can into those uh, into the short form content. <laughs> let's let's address the crowd here. Hey, even though it's just me, so and Rich brought in all these folks. We have 181 eyeballs, is what I like to call them. Rich, thanks so much. Ooh, 186. There you go. Yeah, let's thanks talk so much dynasty. for joining. Yeah, let's talk some dynasty. We've got three likes. We've got <laughs> Mr. Mr. Padilla's mom is in here. I don't see dad. Okay, so let's move on to another one here, man. Let's go to this super chat. Tyler, thank you very much. Just picked up a new orphan. Good team. 12 team super flex start 10 PPR with a 0.25 point per carry. So big old point per carry there. Have Burrow, Cousins, 104, Swift, Gibson, nobody. At wide receiver, CD, 
T. Higgins, Drake London, J. Mo, Hollywood, Pitts. Moves? So what do you think here? Obviously, with a 0.25 point per carry, running backs are inflated. 12-team super flex start 10, so kind of you know standard depth. What's, yeah, a, what's I mean, the move you're making with this roster? Um, I mean, well, he's clearly good at receiver, so you're not worried about there. He has the 1-4, which is going to put him in a pretty good position to get that quarterback, and that's what you got. I mean, that with, obviously you have Burrow and Cousins, Cousins back end, so you're definitely taking the quarterback at 1-4, so you're, you're probably getting Bryce Young. Sorry, just poo-pooed on your guy a little bit. Um, and then, uh, at I mean, if you have two four, you're probably get, you know you're in position to get like a a Tajay Spears, um, right around like somewhere you know maybe a Zach Charbonnet somewhere around there, um, maybe hopefully maybe a Kendrick Miller, probably not. So I get a running back. You definitely need running back help. And it, what sucks is like your team looks like it's a pretty solid team. It, it yeah. compete, but you have no running backs whatsoever. I'm I'm um, moving up. I'm moving up with that 104. I'm tacking the 104 on to. Drake London or something, move up, get me some Bijan in that format. Come on, yeah. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll ask for a body in return because I won't be getting a quarterback there. Like, give me a that know, would give me work. a Purdy or something like that. Yeah, I mean, if you could pull it, I off. would offer T Higgins over Drake London. Um, I would you try like to hold T on to over. We, we like, I like no, I like, I like, Lon- I like London over Higgins, right. like right. by a lot, honestly. Um, it's, it's no shame on Higgins, he's a very solid player. But I just like the situation. Why? I mean, I guess he has that Burrow stack, which kind of sucks. But like, I would. That's what I don't. I don't care about stacks as much in Dynasty. This isn't best ball. I would. I'm with you. I would see if I could take one four and Higgins and package that up to get Bijan. I know that seems like a lot, and it is. But like, you're getting, you're really solidifying your team at the rim. Because right now, even then, you probably still need another running back. Honestly, like your real move is like keep one four, take the quarterback. And start throwing out some seconds and start going out and get go get James Conner. Um, go get Aaron, go get Aaron, go get Aaron, go get Aaron Jones. Um, James Conner is gonna be your best bet. He's gonna be super cheap uh out there. You could probably get him for like a second. I wouldn't pay two four for him, honestly. So you might be able to get him for a next year second. But I think James Conner would fit in your team really well. I would hate to give, I mean, I'd hate to give up a quarterback and Higgins to get a running back. But Bijan's pretty special. Yeah, I I, I know what you mean. I know but, what you mean. But, I mean, you could start with like Hollywood. I mean, you, you don't want to mess like end the conversation right off the bat. But even in this format too, Jamo and Hollywood. I know Jamo Hollywood and one hundred and four. I don't know. Yeah, but then but yeah, but then you're cutting off your nose to spite your face because now you're really weak at receiver. You know what I mean? Like you, it's shallow. It's, though. It, it, it's a start a, ten. A start ten. I mean, it's it's not that. It, it's it's pretty shallow. Yeah, it's still know. shallow. So Jam- still, Jamo's it's still- almost a, Jamo's almost irrelevant unless you're a Jamo truther in that form. Well, you just gotta wait. You gotta wait a couple games. He's pretty solid. The problem is like with that move is like I don't. I still don't even know if Bijan gets to gets it done. For, like I don't think Adam Bijan that team makes you like obviously without seeing the rest of your team. Like oh, you're gonna win. You know what I mean? And like it's a pretty solid giving, orphan. It's a pretty nice orphan now. No, it's, it's a real it's nice close, orphan. Yeah, but if I'm giving up Bryce Young and T Higgins, like. And I'm getting Bijan. Like I feel like my team needs to be in position to win because you're giving up a lot. Like that you is are. that's a yeah. lot for a running back. And it, and Bijan's well worth it. But like when I'm playing Dynasty and Superflex, like I'm always hesitant. I don't care how good that running back is to give up heat for like that kind of heat for a running back because like you're giving up a combined twenty years there for about seven. You know, it's like yeah. now if it helps you win, I'd go all in for it. But I would. I'd be hesitant. If I can give up one four and T Higgins for uh B. John Robinson, I would I would do that. Um if not, honestly, maybe you just take that one four and you trade back and try and inquire, like maybe go the two for there. We're like, hey, I'll move back, give me one four, I'll take uh one seven and two seven, and you know, something on top of that, and then you maybe get Devon A chain and another uh running back on top of that, like a a running back to kind of go there and pair up with those other two running backs to kind of gamble that way. That's yeah, a tough you, spot. One four have, with that team. You have to hope that the one on one earn the one on one too, because if if there's a decent team who's got that one on one, you're not getting Bijan off of off of him or her in a point two five point per carry. No way. No. Right, let's no. move to um. Let's move to this one here. So yeah, we mentioned his name. What are you selling Hollywood for? Let's assume it's a twelve team super flex start ten. PPR with a 1.75 tight end premium. Let me, well, here, let me throw a trade together. Would you sell 
Hollywood for two random 24 seconds? No, absolutely not. You're going to no, need a first. Even. Yeah. hundred percent. I I'm a firm believer. Like don't, if you're throwing multiple picks at me that aren't first round picks, like you, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, what, what do you, what am, what am I a kindergartner and you're offering me ice cream? Like, no, like that. No, that doesn't move the needle. Like you're offering me a player that's showing he could be a wide receiver one in an offense that doesn't throw the football whatsoever, who is now the, the, the bona fide number one wide receiver on his team that gave up a first for him. No, granted the GM is no longer there, but they give up a first foot round pick for him. Nonetheless, um, who's still extremely young, who is talented, um, who has a rapport with the quarterback, whether it be there or not. For two second round picks, so uh, I want to honestly, I want a first, and if it's not a high, like a mid range first, like I probably want more. Like, like unless I'm getting like if you're giving me Quentin Johnson and you're giving me Jordan Addison, and there's a route there for one of those guys, like I'm okay with it. But outside of that, like what, like even so, you, say you give me one ten, like whether that have Jonathan Mingo or rather have Marquise Brown, like give me Marquise Brown. I'll take I'll take the uh, I'll take the first just because the flexibility of it. The flexibility of a 24 first, especially this time of year. And, and listen, let me preface this by saying I've only been playing Dynasty for like four or five years. I just have the luxury of hanging out with Shane and Scott. So hopefully I'm uh, portraying our, our show in a, in a decent fashion. But yeah, July 6th, give me the 24 first because it's the ultimate mystery box, as my lovely co-host Shane says. It, it's so flexible. It's so pl- flexible to use throughout the whole year. I, I don't feel like Hollywood is going to cost me a ship. Yeah, he's not gonna cost you a ship, but I mean, you know, yeah, that first, that first could give you that first can definitely give you something better than Hollywood. But like, here's the thing, and this is what like kind of drives me a little nutty. Say Hollywood is just wide receiver fourteen this year. Say he's wide receiver sixteen this year. Whatever, and he's twenty five. Whatever player you drafted at one nine or one six, you know, like if they end up being wide receiver fifteen for four years straight then it'd be in tyler lockett that is an absolute home run pick you know what i mean like when you when you start talking draft value i think one of the things that gets missed uh just completely just not taken for what it's worth in dynasty is like everybody thinks they're drafting justin jefferson everybody thinks they're getting a stud player and the fact are fact is there's only so many of these players to go around like there's <laughs> only 12 wide receiver ones i say this on the nerd show all the time but like like it's hard. So like when you have a proven asset that is under the age of 26 years old, like those are assets you want to hold on to. And for people just to throw those away, um, unless you're in rebuild, like literally unless you're in rebuild, like they, yeah, like if my team, I'm blowing my team up and I can get a 24 first for Marquise Brown and I'm, but I'm blowing my entire team up. Yes, I'm doing that. You know what I mean? But like if in season hits, you're going to, and he's, he's wide receiver 13, 14, you're going to first and a second for Marquise Brown. Right. Like, yeah. yeah, and yeah, you could get hurt, but like for me, just to take a random first like that, I don't know, unless I'm rebuilding, like I don't want that. I want the proven assets. Like I'm trying to build a winner here. And for you to take the shot in the dark or like for Shane to say the mystery box, you're right. It's a mystery box. And listen, when you go on game shows and you open a mystery box, two out of three times, those <laughs> mystery boxes are going to be a slinky. It sucks. It's going yeah, to be a can of peas. Like you're not getting the keys to a brand new Escalade. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, and that's the thing. Like people are always taking these mystery boxes in Dynasty. Like it's like that game on the side street where they're shuffling the ball, and the first one they go, like, oh, it's real simple. It's right there. And then all of a sudden they go, go, and you're like, oh my god, where's the ball at? Like it's not that. Like it's hard. It's hard to be a wide receiver one. It's hard to be a running back one. It's even hard to be a wide receiver one because usually the assets that are already there are going to be there for a long time. There's a reason yeah. where you talk about Marvin Harrison, like you know, being as high as he is, like. There's a reason Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase go in the first round of Superflex leagues, and there's a reason they go one two in one QB leagues because you have a wide receiver one what you expect for the next seven years. Okay, right. so those those you, and then you take Ceedee Lamb in there and you take AJ Brown in there, just those four guys, right? And there's plenty more I would add. And I'd say throw Garrett Wilson there. So take those five guys, those five young guys. So we're not even talking about Tyree Kill. And honestly, you could throw Jalen Waddle in there too if you really want to get like yep. be serious. Um, and then we're not even talking about like the guys we love, like Chris Olave. Um, mm. We're not going to talk about um, Devonte Smith. You know, you mentioned T Higgins. Uh, these guys that are out there and, it, and outside of these old guys, like Devonte Adams and Tyree kill and Amari Cooper, um, you know, Chris Godwin could be a wide receiver one. 
But just those guys we talked about, right? This is just those guys. Those six guys. Yep. That is fifth. That we all, everybody in the community agrees. Those guys are wide receiver ones, year in and year out, and they're all under the age of twenty six, right? We could all agree on that. Like you and I can agree on that. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That's six. That's six. Without even adding Olave or Devontae Smith, that is fifty percent of the wide receiver ones out the door, right out the door. You know what I mean? So now, like again, would you rather have Devontae Smith or a random first? Would you rather have? Um, any of those, like I mentioned, I said Jalen Waddle, like these other young guys that Chris Olave is out there, like or random first, like where does that random first, definitely if it's not a top end guy, because obviously if anybody get a top three pick, a top four pick, they're taking that. You know, like, hey, you know Marquise Brown or Marvin Harrison Jr. Like, yeah, yeah, hey. it's it's like a total shit team, and they want yeah. uh, they want Hollywood Brown. So yeah, yeah again, again, what am I, kindergarten or the ice cream? Of course, could be a top four pick. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. those are hard picks to come by too, because again, it's it's a misconstrued thing as well. Where that's why people get stuck in the middle. People don't realize the bad teams in dynasty are really bad right like they're really bad so they're gonna have those like those top three picks in your draft are most likely locked up because those teams are real shitty um unless you're good so like for them everybody's always wants to open this mystery box thinking they're getting at one of those six other guys when the odds are you're not getting one of those six other guys like it's like it's these outlier guys and and then listen i know we've been spoiled these last couple years and haven't seen these guys like Jalen Waddle, Garrett Wilson, Justin, Jamar, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase come into the league. And we'll always have those guys. And we've had – it's been nice because it's kind of been like when you pour out salt on your fries, but the, the top was uh, undone and all the salt oh, comes God. out. So we're getting, we're getting like super salty here in, oh, in Dynasty. God. But like for the most part, usually when you say the salt shaker, it's going to come out slow. It's going to come out so make sure you're getting just enough salt. And that's usually how these players enter into this fray. And it's a process. So like – the way I look at very draft picks is like I like to get I like to use draft picks exactly what I'm drafting them for to get quality players. So anytime I have a pick, unless I'm in a team that's super bad, I have an opportunity to get a player that I can put on my roster for the next four to six years with that draft pick. Like, give me the proven asset. Like, if you listen to that Dynasty Nerd show yesterday, I don't know if it was the first show or the Nerd show, we literally went back and read the last couple of years of just picks. 10 through 12 yeah, yeah, the yeah. final four I, players I listen, right I listen, I listen to that yeah. yeah yeah and those are first round picks so if you're a contender yeah. your first round pick just picks 10 through 12 i think out of those 12 guys most of them were like nobodies like you wouldn't even, like some of them aren't even on dynasty rosters today yep so and i get it like for the most part the only chance to get those guys those justin jeffersons those jamar chases is to draft them when they're rookies and you know justin jefferson was a later pick he went anywhere from six to nine. I know my co-host Matt O'Hara, he was taking him extremely high. He was a Justin Jefferson truther from day one. You know, and Jamar Chase was going super high. So unless you had a rebuild team, you weren't getting him anyways. Like, you know, it was one one. So for me, give me Marquise Brown. Give me the young proven asset, unless I'm blowing my team up. Because his, his career target share is is legit too. I mean, it's like in the upper twenties, right? I mean, I'm just like throwing a number out there, but I feel like, like his career target share is like 26, 28 percent, like a nice alpha target share. Some he was a wide receiver one when healthy in Baltimore. Know, When's the last time you saw anybody's a wide receiver one in Baltimore? Derek Mason? Well, my six year old is bigger than him. That's my problem with him. Here, let's it put is up. A, it is a problem. Let's put this up uh, right here. So, a super shallow league here. Uh, Kat Mahomes, thanks for the question. 10 teams start eight, half PPR. Ayuk and Bateman or Debo and Godwin? Go ahead, Rich. Oh, yeah, Debo and Godwin. Because Godwin, Debo and Ayuk are neck and neck for me, and Godwin smashes Bateman for me, like smashes him. So, yeah, give me Debo. I I, I agree. It's it's such a wash. It's so lateral. Like in that format, I want a running back. I, I don't want to do a wide Yo, receiver 100%. swap like that unless I'm like, yeah, I, I wouldn't even do that trade. But I would if I was getting Debo and Godwin. <laughs> <laughs> I would. You see, that kind of goes to my next question so when i look at these these players right here we're, we're definitely tier types and we uh process over players is our slogan so process over players we consider it to be a process trade when you take a wide receiver that may have perceived higher value in the community but you bump back within the same tier and then you pick up some value on top so you're tiering down essentially is what we call a process trade. You're not losing much in the way of fantasy points per week, yet you're getting that extra little piece, that extra little second that you can then play with. What, what do you think about that general strategy? We're, we're very, very process focused here on Dicey Trades in Five. 
Yeah, I mean, I love to see the players involved, but like, as long as you're in the same tier, like, I have no problem with that. Anytime you get a little extra on top, that's always nice. I mean, that's why you oh, I mean, that's why everybody's trying to trade down in startups, and nobody's trying to trade up because everybody wants to like get that little bit extra on top. So yeah, hundred percent. That's a that's a great strategy. As long as you're not like, again, as long as you're not taking a massive step back for a second round pick, yeah, I'm okay with it. Like you said, if you're if you're talking points per game on a points per game basis, you're losing like maybe one point yeah. per game. Um, and then you're getting a second. Yeah. hundred percent. Now I can turn that second in a super flex league to like Luke Musgrave or Sam Laporta, um, Michael Mayer, um, you know, Michael Wilson, even if it's a late second, you know, they kind of like the upside there. Like, of course, like I'm always trying yeah. to add that little extra salt. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, it comes out slow. Like I'm out here, I'm trying to get salty fries. Yeah. So like yeah. I'm over shaking hard, hoping the top doesn't come off. Yeah. yeah. That's a good process. So for sure. I mean, anytime you can add value, it's, it's a good process. You're always trying to do that in dynasty. So startup strategy. So historically, we like to tr- get into, we get the top eight or nine quarterbacks, just like trying to picture. Yeah, top nine, let's say. We like to trade back into the first to get a second elite QB. However, the way the QBs are now, we're, we're almost accepting the fact, like you got the A. Richards, uh, yeah, A. Richards of the world, and it's almost getting deep enough to where I mean, we'll try to move up and try to get a second elite QB, but we'd also maybe accept just being like, hey, I'll take Anthony Richardson instead of, you know, dumping a bunch of picks, moving up for two elite QBs in a super flex. What, what's your what's your strategy with it with a super flex? You trying um, to get two elite QBs or? <clears throat> well, of course, who isn't? You know what I mean? But like I'm playing the board, I don't like trading up in that because I feel like you give up too much. Like you're just giving up like this very essential like, you're giving up, you know, you're not on top of you're giving up your first or like say your second, but you're also going to be your third. And then probably even like more on top of that. Right. Oh yeah. And- no, th- we're willing to give up. Uh, yeah. So let's say we have a top, we're lucky and have a top four pick or something. we take Lamar Jackson. We're willing to give up our second, third, fourth. And no, to get back up into the first, but we also want back like an eight and a 10. No, 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 because no I would, I would rather, I mean, because I want to look at the whole triage of the, like the points total afterwards. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, first of all, you just took Lamar Jackson, a guy who hasn't finished a season in two years. So like, <laughs> that's, that's one worry. You know what I mean? Uh, out the gate, when you take him, then you're giving up that hit. Like, I understand you want a second QB, but like, I think there's value to be had. Like I'd, I like getting like what I like to do in super flex like that is like I always take a quarterback in round one no matter what. Like I want that guy. 100%, you know what I mean? All right. And then usually, usually, depending on where I pick, there's like usually a quarterback there I like coming back. You know what I mean? Like that I feel comfortable with. Like I'm really comfortable with Daniel Jones as my quarterback too, and so should everybody too. But like I'd even be okay with like sometimes Dak makes it right there at the turn. I mean, I don't know what Dak's you think about there. Dak, but you know, two oh one, two two. Yeah, I I would be okay with like sitting like sitting tight there. Like, I mean, if I have like 112, I, I'd be totally comfortable. Like, oh, for example, so I had um <clears throat> what pick did I have in this Kings Classic League? My whole goal was to get the two young quarterbacks. And I, and I usually went quarterback, quarterback. Oh, I think I had pick 111. Um, I went to Sean Watson at 111. This is super flex, tight end premium. You got him at 111, and, huh? Oof. Yeah. Gift, gift and, there. And when it came back around to me, Dak Prescott was on the board, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just take CD Lamb here and get that elite quarter, the elite wide receiver. And when it comes back, I'll take Daniel Jones. Like that's like I was like, I'll have Sean Watson, CD Lamb, Daniel Jones. Well, Daniel Jones went like two picks before me, so I ended up taking Drake London. And when it came back, I took Devontae Smith, which I I never do that, right? Like I never take in a super flex three receivers in a row. Definitely tight end premium because I'm a big yeah. tight end guy too. But like now my receiving core is, you know, Drake London, CeeDee Lamb, and Devonta Smith. And I settled for Brock Purdy and Kenny Pickett as my quarterback, too. And, yes, that is not pretty. But, you know, with Kyle Shanahan's offense, that gives me some upside. Um, with uh, Kenny Pickett's gives me upside. But, like, for me to give up all that draft capital and then I get back in the first. And, like you said, like, it depends how high you're getting. Like, so say you had one for it, what you're talking about. You get Lamar Jackson. Like, what are you trying like giving up all that draft capital? Where do you expect back to land? Because I, I expect it to be pretty, yeah. it has to be pretty high, right? 
Yeah, so we would we would take, let's say we had the 104, we earned it in the Derby, and then, yeah, we trade up into the, yeah, we're just trying to get into the top seven or so. We'll, we'll give up, you know, a strong amount to get, you know, you I, have forget to. What our, I forget what the line is. Yeah, you have to give a ton, but yeah, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, the line is kind of like Dak, I want to say. I haven't pictured it in a while here, but. See, but that's, but that's what I'm looking at then. I'm looking at it as like, okay. Then I'm giving up. So for say for Trevor Lawrence, say you get Trevor Lawrence, which would be absolutely fantastic there. But say like you just missed Trevor Lawrence because it goes a little higher because his his hype's a little high now, and I think it's valid. But you get Justin Fields, like someone on those lines. I don't know that you, I don't know who you, who you would be thinking here, but let's let's go and go high him. Let's go the good guy. Trevor we Lawrence. would do that, especially in a four point. We would pay that for uh, for Fields. But yeah, let's go Trevor Fields. Lawrence. Let's assume so we got Trevor got up to get Trevor Lawrence. So you're essentially giving up. You're giving up. Um, say you're giving up at then because then you're giving up. So your second would be two eight, right around there. So you're giving up. I'm gonna take your yeah, somewhere around there. I mean, so you're probably giving up like AJ Brown, um, somewhere along those lines, right there, like at wide receiver. And then you're coming right back in your third. You get three four. You're probably giving up like potentially Saquon Barkley. But let's go even like young. Let's say studs like. Chris Olave might be there. I know his 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 draft capital gone up, but say even AJ Brown went a little bit higher. I'm trying to use AJ Brown say, but say give you'd be giving up Olave, Chris Olave, Devontae Smith, and then in the fourth you're giving up probably like maybe even like a TJ Hawkinson in Superbook streaming somewhere around there. So you give him like Hawkinson, Devontae Smith, and um, Chris Olave for Trevor Lawrence, and like. You could sit here and say, like, oh yeah, that's like that's like that's pretty solid um like for that offer, but like I wouldn't want to do that. Cause again, like you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. Cause now you're like in such a hole in the back end too. Like you're automatically like drafting some older guys, you're taking some risks. And yes, you got those two two young studs that carry your way. But I've seen I've seen a lot of people pull that strategy and I see it fail more than it works. Because like you're in such a hole already in where you're drafting. And then like a lot of times you end up like, and that's the thing, like if you go young, like, okay, I got my two young quarterbacks. Like I'm going to go young the rest of the way to build that. Like you're taking a lot of risks there because you're passing on some proven assets. And then if you do take the proven assets, anything happened, because now your roster is so much smaller because you lost those couple rounds there. Like if anything goes wrong, you have a high draft pick, which is good, but still like, like, now, by the time you get this back on track, your quarterbacks are older as it is anyway. So, like, it's just, I don't like, but I think the point of it is, like, I don't like giving up that much, like, youth, like, because that's where the value is in those, like, first five rounds. Like, that's a cream of the crop, right? Just for that other quarterback, when I can go out there and get somebody, like, you mentioned points per game basis. Like, the way I look at it is, like, even, like, quarterback 16 is a top 60 overall scorer, like, overall at quarterback 16. Like, I would rather have that guy. Like, I know I got the one stud for sure. Like, you hope at least, right? Like, Deshaun right, Watson, right. Lamar Jackson, right? Like, same thing. You hope Lamar Jackson's a stud. Like, he is a stud when he plays. But if history tells it, then which all you can go off, he's like, there's no guarantee he's going to play. You know, like, Joe Burrow broke his knee two years ago. You know, like, you have, we have no idea about anybody. But for the most part, quarterbacks are safe. Like, I'm giving up all this young assets for him when already I can get a, like I said, if I could get Daniel Jones, like, I would much rather have Daniel. Let me put it this way: I'd rather have Daniel Jones. I think this is a better way to word it. Clay, Daniel actually. Jones, and Daniel Jones, Chris Olave, Chris then... Olave, and TJ Hawkinson, right? Than Trevor Lawrence, or I would honestly rather have um, who's another mid-range quarterback that goes there, like right around there that that time, like not even Kirk Cousins, Aaron Rodgers, like no, he's too old. But you know what I mean? Like <laughs> even like. Like I would rather, yeah. I honestly would rather have. Now I know this sounds crazy, but I, I believe in them, and you get him probably like in the black end of this. I got rather have like Devonte Smith, Chris Olave, and Jared Goff than Trevor Lawrence. Like if, if I had Trevor Lawrence, like hey, I'll give you Jared Goff, Devonte Smith, and Chris Olave. I would probably and like and I already had a stud quarterback, mind you, too. Like I had, I had Justin Fields, I had Deshaun Watson. Um, I would take that deal. Like, so, and that's how I kind of look at things as a whole. Like, what would I rather have as a whole? Like, it's easy to say, yeah, I want Trevor Lawrence and go with Lamar Jackson. That's easy to say. Like, who wouldn't want that? Sure. But like, I'm trying to build like a squad like here. That's like really good. And I'm sure Scott and Shane would say, well, bro, like I could draft a stud team from six on. 
He's like, I got, I get now. I got two eights. I got two tens. That's like the 120 spot. Like I'm gonna get some good value there. Like I well, get that too. But we, I just we uh we, du- we doubled down. Work. We doubled down. Like so. Actually, whatever. I haven't done a startup in a while to test see if I have the cojones to do this because you get a little bored. But we'll so we'll give up the two three four. We won't start with that. Give up the two three four to get up into the first, and we also get like an eight and ten back, right? But on that fifth, the fifth round, we'll trade back again to try to get into the ninth, tenth, whatever round, and get a twenty four first on top. So we have two golden rules. I think there's two. Yeah, I think there's two. Yeah. Never give up your 24 first in the startup. We don't like to do that. And always getting the same amount of pieces back as you're giving away. So even if you're getting like a 14th or 15th rounder, get the 14th or 15th rounder. So anyway. my rule is to always give up my first in the startup. Is it really? Oh, yeah, dude. Like, just, I, I was thinking about it, man. I, I don't know if I even texted Shane and Scott about this. I was like, you guys play in a league with rich he seems like the take my freaking first kind of guy just time, like, scott, scott, yeah. i literally was in a startup last year okay so <laughs> and, and let me explain you how this like how like and tell me who won this right okay i'm in a league with scott we my first league so ever this scott. is a scott trade this is a scott trade this, how, how scott, long ago yeah. last year like almost a year ago to the date honestly like almost a year ago uh we did this like it's called the Ohio Dino League so it's it's people in the industry so Scott's in there uh Madman got together Rich Rebar Chris Allen uh just, I don't I don't want to name everybody in the league but you know like some pretty well established guys and um I'm on a, you know we're we're going and we're going and like Scott's like, Hey, I'll take any 23 first here for this pick. And it was like in the like sixth round or some round or like, so wherever it was. Yeah. yeah I, that sounds right. I literally, I jumped up so <laughs> fast. Like you might've thought I was like on Viagra. Like that's how, like I, how hard I got up. You know what I mean? And I get up there, I'm like, dude, Scott, oh, I'll give yeah. you my 23 first. And like, DJ Moore was on the board. So I got DJ Moore. Right. And the reason I love giving my first is because in a startup, in a startup, in that range, right? Like usually before startups even happen, I go to every team and I offer my 20, whatever the next year class is first for their six round pick. That's a good spot, right? Like you get in a super flex, like you can get a pretty good player. And for the most part, you'll usually get a player that you wouldn't give up a first for. So, and the way I look at it is that first to me, by adding that one extra guy in that round, almost it, it gives me that such an edge over my league mates where like now I got that extra guy where like the odds of my team now making the playoffs are pretty good. Now this was a 14 man league as well. I was about to say, it comes down to format number of starters, how deep it is and all, because if it's shallow, if it's a 12 team start nine at all, I'm not giving up my first for DJ Moore. Yeah. Like, this it, is, um, this is a 14 team start 10, I there believe. You there you go. And uh, I gave him my first, I got DJ Moore. Well, I won the league. <laughs> yeah, and, but like what, whatever, man. Take you know what I mean? So first. like, I so he shift. got my first, which is one fourteen, which is a mostly <laughs> two two for DJ Moore. You know what I mean? So like, and the reason I like doing that is for that exact. Like, I always feel like when I make those moves, like I'm getting a player like that, like DJ Moore, and that, and what it does is it helps you like because in that range too, you're like, oh, do I get the other receiver here? But I need a running back, right? Like. I always look at that view like that lets me fill out my receiver room and still grab that running back or it allowed me to wait on tight end a little bit. So like it helps really solidify my roster right there. And it it gives me, again, it gives me much, not my odds literally increase probably tenfold of making the playoffs in that league. Right. Like, and, and, and and immediately Scott's chances to make the playoffs immediately go down a little bit just because he's missing a, a, a fifth round pick, right? Like in that, in that sweet spot, like where you could add a DJ Moore um, or whoever else on the board. Like I'm a big, I'm a big DJ Moore guy. So that's why I was super excited about that. But I'm sure there's probably like 10 other players that were on the board. That other people were like a hundred percent. I give up my 24 first for this pick. So like, that's why I go into startups because like in a startup, my 24 first isn't nearly as important porn because like i feel like i'm gonna do a good enough job to draft a playoff team right. so my first is going to be late you're betting best. on yourself you're betting on yourself to, 100%. to put out a good squad no i like it anthony thank you for the super chat man so i'm starting a 12 team ppr super flex league start 11 there you go three wide receivers three flex 13 bench auction startup <laughs> good luck i want to contend from the jump can you talk through recommended build 
Yeah, don't be a f- if you want to contend through the jump is like fine. Like grab those couple young guys early, of course, but then just snatch up that value of age. Like if you want, it is so easy to win the first year of dynasty if you really want to because you can just grab all the value at, at age, right? Like the running backs you're gonna get, like I mentioned, the Aaron Jones, the James Connors, uh. Uh, Joe Mixon, right? Those could be your three starter running backs. They're all have potential to be running back ones. All, all three of those guys be running back ones. You're getting you. You already hopefully got a couple of young uh, wide receivers, but now you can get like guys for free or like Mike Evans. Um, you mentioned you like get, Robert Woods in, in your last pod. You're like uh, Bobby Trees is free. No, no. <laughs> free. He's. I mean, you're drafting him and like you're gonna get him in like the twentieth round. You know what I mean? But like yeah. guys like Mike Evans are gonna go super late. Guys like Devonte Adams are gonna go way later, like than expected. So like. All you got to do is just jump to ADP by, and you're not even, you're not even killing your team because, like, Devontae Adams, I can't remember where he's going. Even in the startup draft, like, he went, like, like wow, Devontae Adams is still on the board. Do I grab him here? But, like, people won't grab people that like that early because they, like, this has only got a year or two left. He's only going to be 31 yeah. years old. So, like, it's simple. Like, if you want to contend early and you have a, say you're playing a high stakes dynasty league, um, just grab the bets that you know are going to be studs because they're there. Guys like Christian McCaffrey will fall, like, now he, He'll fall a little bit less, but I mentioned three stud running backs here that you can grab yeah. easily. At tight end, you can grab Darren Waller at value easily. And with your early picks, make sure you get the young quarterbacks. Like Clay said, you you, you hammer those two young quarterbacks, grab a young wide receiver too, and then just vet it out. Just vet it out. Grab yeah. all that value. I mean, you're just draft fantasy points there because they're always there to be had. And it's nobody fun, else wants it. you say that. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually, and I'm going to pull it up on my, on my screen here. So I'm in the middle of a, is it a 14 team? Yeah, I guess it is. I thought it was a, a 12 team for some reason, but pretty deep format here. It's 14 team. It's like start 11. I, I set it up to where there's three running backs, three wide receivers, and I've got some other funky stuff in there too, probably, but let me share my screen. <laughs> Careful clay. No, um, let's see sleeper. Okay. Branch, can you see this? I sure can. Okay. So I'm Mr. Baby. We don't we don't need to talk about that. But yeah, this Ooh, is a Mr. Dynasty. Baby. Be- oh, I know. I know. Well, we can't talk about that offline now. So here's my team. How do you think I did so far, man? So I yeah, was really that's, that's I what was, I just I talked mean, about. Look at all the points I was drafting. And I was really focusing on on running back. Like I didn't I hated my Stafford pick. That was a stupid pick right there. Uh it wasn't necessary. He may have even been able to make it all the way back, but I took Waller at the. You should have taken Michael Pittman. Taking Pittman. Yeah, because you're like that's where like oh actually no I would have taken him yeah because the way your team so like you said once you took Derrick Henry you're like I, like with that running back you, the way you're going yeah, back yeah. Like, I'm trying to it's win like now like smash, yeah you shouldn't even take a pit you should have taken it you should have taken Amari Cooper there and Matt Stafford would have been there when you probably came back like that's the only thing I would have yeah. done like that, besides like your team built, but like when he asked like how you build like a contender, I mean, look at that team, like that team's ready to build like out the gates. Like definitely when you start three running backs, yeah. like a lot of people are going to have, a lot of people are going to have a hard time doing that. At least you have a good trade value, like an Alexander, Alexander Madison there, but your team right there that you just drafted is ready to win. Now, now in three yeah. years, that team's not even going to be existing in the NFL, but <laughs> yeah, in the meantime, yeah, right, right. in the meantime, hopefully your bank account goes up a couple bucks. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, and that's it, man. Like you gotta be like, like, what do you do? What are you willing to do to win a ship? Right. Like, are you willing to go all in early for that ship and go down as like the first person that won your league? And then yeah, struggling, but guess what? That's cool too. Because when you're struggling and rebuilding, it's why the game of dynasty is so big and why it's so fun. Cause I, I said it, I haven't said this in a long time, which is funny, but this is my slogan 15 years ago. <laughs> so in dynasty, I was like, the greatest part about the game is even when you're losing, you're winning. Right, like yeah, it's no, fun. I've heard you say that. It hasn't been 15 years. I've heard you say that <laughs> it's fun recently. to lose because then you're getting all these young guys, right? Like it's it's cool to be in that rebuild mode. Like, yeah, like you're throwing your money like away for just like two to three years, but like you're building like something that could potentially be a monster, right? Like you're getting all those young guys. Like you have B. John Robinson, Brees Hall, Justin Jefferson, Jalen Waddle, Chris Olave, Trevor Lawrence, Kyle Pitts. You're like, people look at those teams, you're like, dude, how'd you get this team? Like, dude, I sucked hard hard <laughs> dynasty d for three years man like my, my, my i'm surprised my cheeks aren't caved in you know what i mean but like here i am today king of the crown it's like you're that guy at the fire festival with ja rule 
No, Firefly. Get, oh, I watched. I watched that the other trying day. Trying to go again. get water. I, I love. <laughs> I love that documentary. Actually, yeah, it was fantastic. Good. It was we good. Ha- we have somebody who takes notes on uh on TikToks. So there's one right there, the 59 second mark, where I, I don't even remember what you said, but it's perfect. Oh yeah, something about <laughs> sucking D. What did What did you say? I don't even know. It'll be know. there. We'll, we'll have somebody remember. make it. Here's here's. I, an, I wanted to ask you two important cra- questions. Well. We'll start with this. I don't smoke crack. So what do you think about the plane that I made you up above your head? The nerd herd plane with the banner on the, uh, on the overlay. Does that do anything? Does that show like, you know, passion, how I cared about this stream? You like, you like the the plane. Do you have a plane, Rich? No, I don't have a plane. (laughs) I am not rich. I'm I'm only rich in name. Um, (laughs) It, 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 if I was rich, I still would not buy one of those planes. Cause I would, I would feel hundred percent confident. I would die. Um, in one of those things in a hard gust of wind. No, but I like it. I saw it earlier. I was like, oh, that's nice. That's a nice little touch. Like, look at, I, I look never, at, I never do this for, for our own show. Yeah. 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 I so, do like it. It's pretty, it's a nice little visual with the flag hanging behind us. So if I'm creeping around your car and somehow I managed to infiltrate your car. So if I hop into your whip, what song do I hear? Rich, I ask everybody this question. Yeah, um, that's that's it. You're you probably won't talk to somebody that has a more eclectic taste in music than I do. Like I love punk rock, I okay. love folk, I love jam bands, I love hard rock, I love rap. You know, I, I don't yeah, like man. country. Um, so it really is like it just really depends on what vibe I'm in and what car I'm in too. You know what I mean? Like if I'm like like if I just ate an edible. And I'm hopping in my BMW, and it's nighttime out. Like I'm, I'm, I'm feeling something that I could vibe with. Like if I'm feeling real mellow, like I'm gonna start, like I'm gonna listen to something real chill. Like if I'm feeling like emotional, like I might throw on some like dashboard confessional. You know what I mean? Like all right. I'm so like, let's say let, let's let's say you're chill. Or actually, okay. let's not say you're chill. You said you had a big day today, a crazy day. What song do I hear today? Today, like I'm. Uh, yeah, in, love, in the I middle love, of the craziness. Just I love finding new music, so sometimes I can find something good that I'm really into, like, I don't know, like maybe like a lot of times I like, I I throw my whole, I throw my whole library on like a shuffle and see like, I'll kind of like let that do my vibe. Like, so like, I just got back from the Dave Matthews uh, concert uh, with my wife. And like, so right now maybe I throw on like, like a pump up, like, you know, why I am by Dave Matthews, you know, like that. it's It's like a pick me up song or, um, I don't know. It's so tough. Like when you're talking music to me, like I appreciate and love music so much. I go to so many concerts and like, I love so much different music. Like it's hard for me to say like my favorite bands in the world. Like, like I love Dave Matthews. I love the bleachers. I love rage against the machine. Oh, rage. Um, man! Evil empire. I was listening to that cover to cover yesterday. One of my favorite bands of all time. Taken back Sunday, screeching weasel, um, which is a punk band, uh, rancid. Like, it's like, I love rancid. God, yeah, you're going way back, dude. Yeah, so, I hear so, well, I'm I old too. So it's like so many different um, bands I love, and I appreciate it all. Like I love like a good acoustic music. I love good rock. I love good rap. You know what I mean? Like I go listen yeah. to Tupac every day of my life. Like if you know, like yeah, man. Throw, it, throw it on the radio. Bone Thugs and Harmony every day of my life. You know, thuggish, thuggish, ruggish bone. I was listening to that before this show, man. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so Palmer FC, thank you very much for the super chat, man. I haven't seen Palmer FC before on one of our streams. I, I would recognize that avatar. So 10 team, one QB, start eight, half PPR. Holy shallow format, Batman. Yeah. T-Law, Brees, ETN, DK, Ridley, Christian Watson, J-Mo, uh, who's Will? Jameson Williams, okay. Yeah. Pitts. Should I be looking to upgrade or prep for longevity? Don't have many picks this year or next. I've got Deshaun Watson and AJ Dillon to trade. Yeah, I mean, Watson's not worth a, a ton in one QB, 10 team leagues, unfortunately. Um, and your team looks really good, but you're also in a 10 team league. So, like, every team looks good in my eye. I feel like your team looks really solid. Um, you definitely could upgrade your receiver position. Um, <laughs> without like i love the upside there um so like you have that i would entertain trading dk metcalf with you know a full deal of aj dylan sean watson and dk metcalf and try and upgrade there like can i get chris alave for that like can, can you get chris alave for dk metcalf into sean watson you know like um, I, I wouldn't want to do that in a half ppr though 
I guess. Oh, it's, oh, it's half PPR? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's yeah. like it's, it's super like give me give me hammer running backs kind of format. And yeah, actually, I, I like I like Deshaun Watson in this format. I just think he he has I that. Deshaun Watson. Yeah, and in this format too, you know, ten team one QB. We want the Shane always says quarterbacks that put up the crooked numbers or the crooked stats, right? They'll do a Justin Fields kind of thing where they throw up a 40 burger and you just mm-hmm. live, you just live on that. Like Daniel Jones is, is relevant in this kind of format. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. So, I mean, I mean, I think Trevor Lawrence is too, though. I mean, it's not he, like he is. It's just, I would not like trade Deshaun Watson lightly, even though it's a one QB. Dude, what dude in a one QB 10 team league, I would be throwing around quarterbacks like they're nothing. Like they gotta be they'd have honestly, I think how hard it is to get I mean, another- I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like you don't need both T T Law and Deshaun Watson. I'm I'm just saying I oh, like no. Deshaun Watson in this form. Okay, yeah, that's fine too. Then trade T, T then trade T Law and DK and try and upgrade it. That'd probably actually get you more, honestly, because Deshaun's gonna run uh more than people realize and Cleveland's gonna throw the football an absolute ton this year. And they got some weapons for him to actually throw the football too. So yeah, trade T I I, me personally, I don't know what you think, Clay. Like, I would like to add one more. Like, I would like to get, I, w- I don't want, like, DK is your number one, and I want to do better than that, I guess, is the way I I'm, look at I'm it. Packaging, I'm packaging those wide receivers. I need a, I need another running back here. Like, I will gladly tack something on to oh, ETN. To yeah, I mean, in this format, there's just starting this running back. It's so shallow. Half PPR starting. I'm surprised he's so weak at running back, too, for being such a shallow league. And Palmer it's not. State. And it's not like he's mega stacked. I don't know uh, elsewhere to to warrant the fact that he's weak at running back. I don't know, but he's on the show asking a question, and we just helped him out, Rich. So he's gonna he's gonna get better. Okay, yeah, I maybe mean, trade ETN Super, too, man. possibly. Even I don't know. Like, it'd be all about trading. Package. Well, it'd be nice to like keep him just in case in that format. But yeah. no, but to try and get like like to upgrade. Like if he's if he thinks he's a contender, ETN and DK get like. <laughs> Can you get me? I would need to see, yeah, I would. I, I would literally no. need to like see your entire team in my in the dynasty GM there and see the entire league, like for that kind of like when you're talking to such a small league, like you said, like that format's so like shallow. Like I automatically like, once you put that up there, I automatically assume every team in your league is better than yours because they're all yeah. stacked. You know what I mean? Like it's just so shallow. So that's kind of hard. That like when you get questions like that, it's kind of hard to give somebody like advice that you feel confident about because like it's easy for us to say, oh trade this and that which is it's pretty shallow advice like you you really do need to see like you need more information that kind of format yeah we we always ask for more information but gen- generally in that format like super shallow like that the side that has more pieces on it is the losing side the, yeah. the if if you you know that's that's what it that's what it tends to be anyway so we got some more questions here and Rich, I, I sent you a message in, in the private chat. Very, very private here. We're going to have to keep that offline. But let's go back to the comments. I don't know where I, where, where do it's I on the that? right side of your screen, like kind of middle. It's not near your plane. It's not near the plane above your head. It's to the right. <laughs> Let me look. <laughs> I'm going to look. Hold on. This is fun, by the way. You know what's so great? Like, So I'm frolicking across the country, right? Inviting, spamming yeah. myself. Spamming myself in the channels of the industry. And I'm just like talking to fans. Like I'm a big fan of you, like big Dynasty Nerds fans. This is a lot oh, of fun. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. You guys are awesome. So, all right. Let's go to this one right here. Here, Rich, you read one here. Oh, no, I'm typing you right now. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> I was in full screen, so I couldn't uh, see anything. Take your time. Um, let me go back full screen so I have a big, big screen here. Okay. 12 teams, standard. Start 10. 10. Oh, start 10. Sorry. Superflex tight end premium, one and a half, have zero running backs and Kyler, so decided to tank. <laughs> Biggest win now pieces are DK, Andrew, Cousins, price for each. Um, so, in a situation like that, um, people are going to tell you this is the price, but you're blowing your team up. You're in tank mode. So, everything's got to go. Like, everything's got to go. So I would want for Mark Andrews, I want two firsts. For Kirk Cousins, I want a first. For DK Metcalf, I want two firsts. Um, for Kyler Murray, I'm probably holding because his value is so depreciated right now. Like you're, you're better off just holding and coming back. Unless somebody's going to give you like a decent first for Kyler, um, you're better off just holding because you probably get more down the road. But like 
everybody's got to go. So I think you, I think with all those pieces there, like for me, I'd want two first for DK Metcalf, um, the 12 team. Um, can, you get, can you get that? Have you, can you get two first for DK? It's, he's kind of hard to get. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, why? I don't see why not. First. I don't know. Yeah, still two first. So you're, you got. I know, but that's fine. They, no, but I, just, be... I couldn't sell them for that much. There's, there's no way. Like it'd be hard to even get a first. Honestly, a first I, for I, DK Metcalf. I'm serious. I, I like DK Metcalf. And, what? But, I don't but, even yeah. like DK Metcalf, and I would like. There's no way I could sell them for two firsts. It'd be tough in a lot of the leagues I play in to sell them for a single first. You. What leagues are you playing in? Nobody's gonna give you a. If you, we I don't play even, in like, deep. We play in deep, deep leagues where, dude. Yeah. If you offered, like, hey, I'll give you DK Metcalf for a first. I'm like, yeah, that's let's, like Scott. Let's get in the, like, here let's we go. Get in the league, bro. Let's get in the league. Yeah. You, you can give me your 24 first in the startup. Okay, and, and you don't think was, you get two first? Like, what? What do you? No you way. Would, no way. I can get two first for DK Metcalf. For five years of a guy who's been a wide receiver one, he's going to be a top 15 wide receiver. Got a quarterback come back with a 70% completion percentage. Tyler Lockett's on his way out. You got a really savvy route runner in Jackson Smith and Jigba who's going to literally come over and take for Tyler Lockett and let uh, DK Metcalf keep doing his, doing his due, which would be a pretty much a 30% target share. Um, like, where else are you going to find that? Like, a first. Like, here's the thing. If you give up DK Metcalf for just a first, and that's all you get is a first. Like you said, you can't even get a first, which would be like I don't even that doesn't even comprehend in my dime well, sprint. Can't, can't get a good can't get a good first. It's just DK Metcalf is kind of I don't know he's kind of polarizing. I like him too because talk about a I don't like swing. Him. Well, okay, you don't like him, but I like him in the regard that there could be such a value swing if he pops. It doesn't take much for him to go. You know. Crazy high in value. What was I going to do? I, I do have to say, though, Rich, I can't the, the you reason said you couldn't get a first for DK Metcalf that blows my mind. Because this on the league, man. Clay, Clay, if you trade away DK Metcalf and now you need a receiver, now you're drafting a receiver and you hope he turns no, into DK we Metcalf. We don't use, but we don't use the picks. We're not the likelihood of us making that pick is so low. So it's more so like the fungibility. And the league economy obviously comes into play too. If picks don't mean anything to to your league, then maybe a different story. But anyway, well, no, no, but Rich, so you, oh, no, no, I need to hear this. Go ahead. So what, go ahead I, I, this is my own personal. Uh, I want to know. So what are you doing with the first after you get it? Like explain. Like so, say you can only get a first for DK Metcalf, like just one first. You don't even get a second, like a first and a second. So say you can't get a first. Like I'm not taking anything less than a first and second rebuild for DK Metcalf. Sure, I'd rather swallow him and let him sit in my belly and slowly digest in there next to all these Mike and Ike's I'm eating. What do you do? So you in your strategy, the way you guys play dynasty, you trade away DK Metcalf for just a first and you're, you're ecstatic about it, obviously, because like you didn't think you could get a first for DK Metcalf. Now you said, I'm not drafting anybody. What are you doing with that first? Like, what is the game plan here that you just gave up DK Metcalf? Like, what is the game plan? Yeah. So let's assume, let's just say middle of the road team, right? And we'll yeah, go so- 12 team, 12 team start 10 PPR. And we'll say there's 1.75 tight end premium, right? DK Metcalf. I mean, he, he looks on paper. I don't, he's not, he's got the name. What we're doing there. If we don't have two elite Q, QBs or what I'm doing anyway, is I'm trying to tack on that first to whatever, you know, not a trash can, but a recycling bin quarterback tack on that first and try to get a better quarterback. It's just, yeah, man, I'll I'll, I'll sell D, DK Metcalf for a uh, for a projected, you know, not shitty at least twenty four first. Okay, I would so, do one single first, man. So maybe you potentially upgraded your quarterback position. I don't think, which I don't think you should, would be able to do. Like not like any leagues I would like. I well, anything's possible. I've seen the craziest shit ever in trades. But like, hey, I'll give you um this like you said like jared goff in a first no, for... no. so that won't do anything jared goff isn't isn't gonna get you in the conversation Daniel with, Jones? Uh, no how about dak prescott and you throw on that 24 first and see if you can get up and get you some joe burrow or something i don't know That's i would what tell looking to do i would tell you to kick a rock so hard and that rock would have spikes on it too <laughs> just to make sure you felt the pain if you offered me dak prescott in a middle and first for joe burrow like i would literally like like, dude, like, dude, you're an analyst. Like, what kind of trade is this? Like, for me, again, for just me personally. I'm just, I don't, throw, I'm just throwing I, it out there. I know, but I'm not saying this to be a dick, though, either. Like, so I don't take you. it that way at all. I'm just saying, like, so for me, the way I look at it is, like, okay, that's the move. Well, now you have this hole, 
at wide receiver, like a big hole, because you just traded pretty much your number one wide receiver in that team, essentially. So you have this massive hole at receiver, and you're trying to slightly upgrade your quarterback position, like from Daniel Jones to Joe Burrow, and a and a points per game basis are probably not even that too crazy. So like, even if you pull off that trade, like somehow, like you pull off that trade, Daniel Jones for Joe Burrow. And the points per game on your team level isn't like drastically changed, but it has really because now you you've actually lost a lot of points in that tr- in, in your team because you just lost DK Metcalf points. So you probably realistically let's call let's call Joe Burrow five more points per game than Daniel Jones. And Daniel Jones is back as Daniel Jones rushes. He's averaging like thirty yards per game, where Joe Burrow is not rushing anywhere. Um, but Joe Burrow is going to have much more higher touchdown production there. So say like you know. On a points per game basis, like Joe Burrow's averaging probably about five more points per game on on touchdowns alone than Daniel Jones, but then you just lost, you know, say the 12, 13 points per game on DK Metcalf. So like you just created a negative on your team there. Um, the way, again, how I would look at that. So yeah, like you upgraded your quarterback position a little bit, but like how much better is your team? Like how much of a better position are you in to win a ship? Like now maybe your team, now maybe the plane there is like your team's a little bit worse, and now you have a higher draft pick, so now you're gonna chain chance to get Marvin Harrison Jr. But again, now th- those players got to develop a little bit as well too, and you got to build your team because you have more holes. Like I'm just like for me to think about that, like it's just it's all we- like it's just weird to me, like like to create these holes to upgrade somewhere else and and like how are we going to fill that hole like like what's the plan to fill that hole for dk metcalf now because you don't you gave up that extra first say you somehow pulled off the like you bent somebody over you didn't even offer him lube but you got joe burrow for daniel jones in the middle and first like say that happened like it's like hey you know like hey i'm just <laughs> hey it worked it was, uh, it was dark out i had a couple <laughs> beers you know like hey, i asked is what it is. Like, well, like, what's the plan? Like, to upgrade the receiver at that position. Like, how do you replace DK Metcalf? It's he's replaceable. Is is the thing? He's replaceable. Here, With let's what? move. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next. Oh, one oh you why? Why do you want to move on when we're having a conversation? Talk, I love it. These are my favorite. DK Metcalf was wide receiver sixteen last year. Hey, like, what are you yeah, replacing it's, it's, him with? Yeah, exactly. I'll replace him with the wide receiver twenty four and a second on top of it. But but. <sighs> Yeah, man. That's DJ Moore, by the way. <laughs> it's, DJ, it's a DJ Moore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's DJ Moore. It's all. Yeah, I would do that. Can we do DJ Moore? That's hilarious. okay. Let's go. No, we can move right here. And guys, Rich has got Rich has got twenty minutes. Um, and yeah, I've got, 20, are good. I've got I've got I've got twenty okay. minutes. I've got twenty minutes too because I want to go out in Cleveland tonight. I'm not gonna lie. I uh, yeah. yeah what a cool what a cool city, bro. I, a huge it's building. Greatest cities in the world. I'm next to this massive building. Okay, where so are you at downtown? Go to like hit I'm up at the, the Marriott. Yeah, that's where I'm going tonight. That's where I'm going. Yeah, at the flats. We're gonna have a good yep. time. Okay, so Jeremy Ziggis. How, how are you saying that last name, Rich? Uh, these d- disgas. I got you're, disgas. You're like, you're like Shane. You're like Shane. Okay, <laughs> I, I bet I, you probably dropped the Z. It's probably Ziggis or something like that. You know I what I mean? Ziggis. Yeah, Ziggis. Yeah. Okay. We'll call him Jeremy. So 14 <laughs> team, one QB, start eight. PPR, Tua Najee Jones, A-Chain, Ken, Kendra Miller. I always want to, Kendra. Kendra Miller, Pittman, Godwin, DPJ, Moore, and Goddard are the main assets. Middle of the road team with out or doesn't have his 24 first is what I'm reading, right? Priced out yeah. of getting my first back. Next moves. Okay, Price out of getting his first back. So that right there, if he's trying to get his first back, well, you can see too, it's it's not a it's not a competing team. So if you're priced out of getting your first back, then I guess you need to sell your top assets. <laughs> right? I mean, what I what I read that, it's like middle of the road, you can't get your first back, then maybe you need to rebuild. Yeah. I think. It looks like you made that move. Obviously, give it 24 first to go for it. So like you feel like you could be like. That's a team. That's a team. If it falls together, if you could stay healthy, because it's start eight. If you could stay healthy, you could compete. If I, if that was my team, you think so? You don't think so? Yeah, no. I do. I think this t- Tua Najee is Aaron Jones. Okay, I, I like Aaron. Aaron Jones is like a uh, one year smash. I like and I like Najee. It's not strong. It's not strong enough in a start eight. His, his receivers are not like he, but here's the thing. If everything goes right, he needs, he needs Godwin to be Godwin, which is a, he's going to be a top, like Godwin's good on a points per game basis to be like wide receiver nine, the 10, 12 overall. Like he is that good. 
you need DJ Moore and Justin Fields to catch fire to um, um, compete. So, like, here's the thing. Either you're going to try and go for it or you're blowing that whole thing up. Yeah. But then even if you like even if you blow the whole thing up with sucks is like you're not even guaranteed a high first because you're 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 first whoever somebody else owns exactly you're giving somebody to give the high first yeah so you're giving some no well it's a one QB so he's giving somebody Marvin Harrison Trump, Jr. Sure. So like and I hate like honestly like I I'm a, I'm vindictive like that like I would hate to give whoever I sort I swear I hear you I would I would rather go for it I'm I swear <laughs> I, this is how I play I would after I gave that first because I've been in this position before. I would rather just go for it and be okay. You know why? And you want to know why I'm okay with finishing at one seven and one eight? Cause I don't even have my first. I don't even care. So like at that point, like I'll just take the higher second, like, and I'd rather gamble and see if that all pans out. And those, all those players hit, which is like, you're right, Clay. Like I'm with you. Like it, he's up against it where it probably won't hit, but I would, I would feel much better about that than giving the guy who I traded Whoever I made that trade for, I gave my first for, and it's probably like that. maybe it was like H and he gave it up for. You know what I mean? Like, then give him Marvin Harrison Jr. The, the because vindictiveness is hilarious. Because, I hear it's you it's on just that. like what are you, you getting? That. Like, you're gonna get a lot of first, but you're probably getting all later first, right? You don't have your own first, so you're talking later picks there because you're like only people are trading for those assets you have for the most part are contenders, right? Like people in rebuild don't train them up, so you're talking probably already. Anywhere for say some guy misses the, the playoffs, you're guaranteed pushing everybody in the playoffs because now you were considered a playoff team, but now you're going to be the one one. Um, you're talking about getting uh, picks like your own, yeah. Oh, sweet, you blow up, but now you own picks six through twelve no. with no assets whatsoever. Like I'd rather just like you made that bed, you sleep in that bed, like, and you hope it pans out. But like when the way I look at that team, like some people, that's the thing. Some people feel like. With a team like that, this is a good example. When you have a team like that and they don't have their 24 first, but they, they feel like they can't win, like they feel like I got to do something drastic. Yeah. No, you, sometimes in Dynasty, you just have to be like, I got to ride this year out. Yeah. Right? I just like, got to sit on, I, I got to not look at this league, not trade yeah. in this league. Like, what you should be doing, thing. honestly, yeah. is like looking at your second round pick and seeing what you could do with that second round pick to make your team just a little bit better. Like to increase those odds just a little bit more. Like I said, I can't remember who his running backs are. Like go get a James Connor. Like, yeah. He had Aaron, get- Aaron Jones. Uh, who the hell else he had? Yeah. I unstarted. Najee. Yeah, not, yeah, Najee. And Najee. And yeah. I'm a huge, a- I'm a huge a chain guy. Like huge a chain guy. Are you really? And yeah. Kendrick- yeah, what a and, what uh, a he, landing spot, man! What a oh, landing dude, he, spot. He was my yeah. one four. He was my one four going into it in one QB, and he was my one four afterwards. And I love that through the process, like when that happens. Um, but like that's a team where like okay, second, third round picks like for you, they should be they like once you that first is gone, all the other picks should be gone too. So like, can you get a second and get James Conner, and can you give up your third um, and get Michael Thomas? You know what I mean, like two guys that offer that upside to kind of like, again, just increase your odds a little bit more and give you a little bit of depth to hope it plays. And honestly, all you're really trying to do, again, vindictive is you're trying to push that guy who has your first, uh, your first back as far as you can in the draft and trying to catch like, yeah, you're right. Clay, he might not win, but with that kind of team, you're just hoping to cash, right? Like you're just hoping to cash. Let me come in. If your team plays third place, maybe it pays fourth place. It all depends. Every league's different. Like, if that's the way, I'm just trying to get in the playoffs because once you get in the playoffs, anything can happen. Like you get one play, all of a sudden Tua throws five touchdowns to Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. A chains a starter at that point. He 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 catches one of those balls from Tua. There's a lot and of DJ Moore has a big game. There's like a variance, there's a lot of right. variance there. And his team is like, I'm with you. Like it's definitely a contender, but I've seen teams worse than that win leagues, right? Like that's that's no. what's funny about Dynasty. The team the best the best team never wins. Oh, Kenny Pickett by a mile. Yeah. So we're we're gonna hit this one and then. I want to let uh, Rich Rich plug his show and his business that everybody knows about or should know about. But JD, thank you very much for the super chat, man. So Trey Lance or Kenny Pickett, you had an easy Pickett answer, right? Yeah. How about I take a play that's going to be the quarterback in 2024? Yeah. Talk How about play a guy who's played quarterback in the last Trey Lance? Years. I, I don't want anything to do with that entire QB room ever, for that matter. But Trey Lance, See, what, what's I'll his tell story? You what. Or this not ever. Not- I, sh- I shouldn't say that. Trey Lance, what are your thoughts on Trey Lance? Well, if you do listen to Dime Search podcast, you know two years ago that I was like, I have an inside source that tells me Ooh. Trey Lance is not it. Like he's just not it. Like the the this source was the best source. I was like, whatever you do, go out and trade Trey Lance right away. 
Um, my co my producer, Jared Wackerly made a uh, trade with Kyle, Kyle Yates immediately on that information. He knew who my source was. So he's like, I'm making this trade right away. <laughs> yeah, um, immediately. And um, for, like I said, get out for Trey Lance. And I, again, a lot of slack. I got a lot of slack, which I don't care. You can call me all kinds of names. Don't even know you. Don't even care. <laughs> Your opinion means nothing to me. Um, and I was like, dude, I would take anything over Trey Lance. So right now, the way I look at Trey Lance is we have a quarterback that team gave up three first round picks, right? Three first round picks for <sighs> what a what a freaking thing that was. And they're not even saying, hey, they're, they're saying Darnold's like ahead of him potentially. Like dude, they're not even bonkers, saying bonkers. Hey. Trey Lance is just like everybody else. He's going to come here and compete. And yeah, we expect Trey Lance to compete for the starting job. And yeah, we, 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 we believe it can be the future. No, it's like, yeah, Brock Purdy deserves to be the starter. Mr. Irrelevant deserves to be the starter. And thank God they got Brock Purdy. Thank God. Cause they gave up. And listen, a lot of quarterbacks are going to win in Kyle Shan's system. It's designed right. to let them win. You know, it's, it yeah. really is. So with Trey Lance, if you're a truther, what are you a truther on? He had one good year four years ago. He missed the entire year with COVID. He comes back for that one game for the show it, like the show it game in college. One game, he comes back. Looks absolutely horrific in that game. Um, the only thing people hang their hats on in Trey Lance is the fact that the 49ers gave out three first round picks for him. And, and, he's, he and he's an athlete. And he's an athlete. And everybody oh, yeah. knows running big it, quarterbacks can break fans. Ooh, his glutes yeah. are strong. He can run fast. Good for him. Like, like what is he show? Like, what is he showing you? He's coming out of a small school quarterback. Same school pretty much where Carson Wentz was yeah, a high draft pick. And how did that turn for pan out too? Sitting there in the corner with his little wannabe Prince William, uh, not Williams. It's uh, the other one. Harry. Prince Char you know? Oh, yeah, oh, Harry. I, thought, I, thought, yeah, I was going different. I was going different. I thought we were. We no, were not like, Prince yeah. Charles. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, dude, like what? Like, so you have a quarterback that is most likely not even going to play quarterback in 2023, which is five years pretty much like, like later almost where he is. Nobody's going to. Nobody's no. trading for Trey Lance. No, and I'm holding if I have him and then just praying for some like trade to where there's a narrative. He's the backup. Then boom, oh my like, God, dude. My like, like he looks bad. He looks bad. Even in OTAs, he looks bad. Like Kenny Pickett by a mile. I feel like you'd have to give more. Like I know most people wouldn't say that, but like you'd have to I, add. You'd have to add. Yeah, because Kenny, Kenny Pickett Kenny yeah. is the starter and he's got talk yeah. about insulation and a great like. Oh. great organization to be in like that's yeah that's like so that's bad dude Even i see trey lance's ADP, or... and i just go what are what is you... his ADP? what is his adp in in super flex right now too high it's too high too high it's too high it's too high is he in top 100 too high is he in top 150 <laughs> too high too high and i love gambling on quarterbacks is he on waivers up oh, i'll throw a dollar no dude like what do you like what a roster clogger and like and by the time he gets a chance like what like and I want to say like what like there's some quarterbacks that got better later. Geno Smith, Ryan Tannehill. Um, you know, quarterbacks do get better later, but like boy, oh boy, is that like a long <laughs> that, shot? That could man. be a minute. Yeah, yeah. Oh goodness gracious. Rich, this was awesome, man. I, I feel like we have to do this again. Like with Shane and Scott and your and your dudes too, man. Um, yeah, yeah. I like to jump on it's here. Fun. I love talking to Shane. I like it's, Scott. It's it's fun to wrap Dynasty, but Hey, all day, every day, man. Plug, plug your stuff, man. You do a lot of, a lot of things for the community. Like you said, you built an awesome tool that we all can use to get better. And I mean, you can talk price if you want, but it's, it's cheap enough to where it's like, come on guys. Like, do you realize how easily you could save those dollars? Like yeah, I, I've got, a, I've got a red, bit, I've got it. Yeah, exactly. I've got a red bull here. Like, boom, that's a one month membership. The nerd herd. Um, exactly. Right now. I mean, our, be our best promo we have going right now is with underdog where you go to underdog, you sign up. Uh, you deposit at least ten dollars and you use the promo code nerds. We're gonna give you a free year subscription to the nerd herd. They like try it out. Nice. Um, our app is absolutely free to download. Now, obviously, like any app that you know we're trying to make money on to build more cool stuff. Um, it's limited on what I could do for the free version, but you can use it in the free version and see how it works out. Um, but really just get to our site, dynasternerds.com. Check us out. Our podcast comes out every Wednesday. Uh, we've been doing a podcast now for uh, nine and a half years, a little bit more than nine and a half years. Uh, our history kind of speaks for itself uh, about our hit rates and what we do well. I mean, we crush rookies. We do a really good job there and kind of just put in position to win. Like we're just constantly trying to 
talk it out, right? That's like same thing we're doing now. We're just talking dynasty and like where you and I, like we saw things very differently and yeah. about like that one quarterback and that, and that's, what's good for the game. Cause there's so many different ways to find exactly. that path. And like, and just because I say, like, I disagree with you, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. And my as long as it's good you, process, as long as it's good process, yeah. and there's a logical, yeah, right. And sometimes you lose on good process too. Like you have to be okay sure. with that. You have to be okay with losing on making good decisions. Like, that's why it's called gambling, right? Um, so we're there to help you. We're, we're there to help try and put you in the best position to make the best decisions. And ultimately it's always in your hands um, to make those decisions, but we're going to try and give you as much information and thought process and the reason behind our thought process to make your dynasty team better because we have one belief here at DynastyNerds.com and one belief only. What do we need to do to get you a title under your belt? And that's all that matters. That's our number one focus. And maybe it takes you blowing your whole team up and drafting. Um, maybe like it's on, obviously what rookies you draft is very important. So we put a lot of effort in Dynasty Nerds there on rookies, like a lot of time in the rookies. Like 30% of our year is just breaking down rookies and talking about and helping you who oh, to wow. draft. Um and then trades, like there's so many different things. And then the tools, like you said, like I like we're building tools. The Dynasty GM right now is a tool to help you just oversee your leagues and give you a bird's eye view and make the best decisions because knowledge is power in Dynasty Fantasy Football. And the more you get of it and the more different like views you get it, like from Clay's view and my view or Scott's view or any other site's view, whether it be DLF or 4 for 4 or any other site out there, Dynasty Happy Hour, Dynasty Trade Calculator, like all that information is important. Even if it's bad information, in your opinion, if it's bad information, because listen, if this one person's on a podcast saying it, there's thousands of other people in there that are thinking the same thing. And yeah. you'll see it in leagues all the time. I use this example all the time. How many times do you see trades go down in your league and you're like, I would have gave up more for that. I can't believe that's a trade you made. It's because you are being stagnant. And when you're stagnant in Dynasty Fantasy Football, all you're going to do is get passed up and miss out on opportunities. And when you listen to shows like, you know, Dynasty Trades in Five or Dynasty Nerds, you're going to get more information, which is going to put you to, to work, right? Because now you're going to apply that information and go out there and make your team better. And sometimes you're going to lose on these trades and these moves you're going to make. And that's okay. Because we're not, you're not going to win every trade, and you got to be okay with that too. And it can't change your process or your thought process. You got to keep the pedal to the metal and keep going. And that's what we're going to do at Dynasty Nerds. We're going to help guide you through the whole process. We're going to get past those misses. And at any point, or any of your team is, we've been playing Dynasty Fans Football for 20 years, so we've seen it. Like we have, we've seen it. You know what I mean? You're like, in, we're you're in, the, you you're in the trenches. It. You're in the trenches with us. No, for sure. Yeah. So that's it. No, it's it's good stuff, man. And you've built a, a powerhouse organization organization your corporation you've got a plane i mean look above you no congratulations you built a no, built machine that. we're trying to do the same on uh on youtube we'll see what happens we've got kick-ass subscribers that are going to help us get there 203 awesome. people stayed here until the end if you wouldn't mind look down make sure you hit that like easiest way to help out the channel but hey thanks rich this was this was awesome yeah uh, let's do it always again. enjoy talking dying for 100 man just let me know and uh, we'll chop on and we'll uh We'll agree to disagree some more. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. All right, I'm going to end the broadcast. Take it easy, guys.